What's up, YouTube? NWN here, aka Young Nico, catching me in the Joe Reach Flex. And you know, I'm personally tired of sequels, but these companies refuse to put out original IPs that are actually interesting. Mostly it's due to fear of failure, seeing as games are so expensive to make nowadays. But if you're gonna drown us in sequels, could y'all tap into y'all IP libraries? It is so many great games out there that deserve their time in the light. And here's my top five. Treat people the way that you want to be treated. Except for in Call of Duty, you can talk shit, that's cool. I needed to be the black ash catcher. It was my destiny to be the, the negro catcher. But let's talk about why, why all white people who like spoiled milk when they take their clothes off. Modern one. Step one, get money. Step two, repeat step one. Number five. EA Street Series. Who else used to sit at the menu in NBA Street Volume 2 and just bob their head to that Pete Rock reminisce? It's funny how a song called Reminisce literally makes you reminisce over one of the best sports games of all time. NBA, NFL Street, it doesn't matter. Hell, bring them both back. The beauty of the Street Series was it was easy to pick up, but it rewarded players who dove deeper into the mechanics. Whether it was running on the walls or goaltending the whole game like an asshole, the games never got boring. The characters were goofy and they didn't take themselves too seriously, and they even had their own story modes. Don't act like you you didn't love performing a game breaker and watching your friend's sad ass face afterwards. EA Sports games, they're trash nowadays. And it's a shame that they shut down EA Sports. <laughs> Number four. EA's Def Jam series. Let's put aside stereotypes and caricatures that the Def Jam series portrayed, and let's just look at it as a game. I say this because the Def Jam series, especially Fight for New York, is still one of the best fighting slash wrestling games out there. You got to create your own character with a bunch of different fighting styles and RPG elements that would keep you hooked. But let's be real here, the special moves was the reason that we all love this game. They were so over the top, I swear it was like controlling an episode of Ultimate Muscle. The series also deserves a sequel because Def Jam Icon was terrible. They threw out all that worked in the previous two games and introduced some DJ scratching mechanic bullshit. The game was universally panned and nobody wanted to play that shit. So what's the solution? Def Jam, Fight for Chirac, Sh Chicago, whatever the hell you want to call it. And featuring Chief Keef, I called him Chief Keef, <laughs> Chief Keef, y'all know I only do one take. Chief Keef, GBE, Lil Mouse, all them motherfuckers, yo. Get to work, EA. Number three. Second Sight. Some of my favorite games that I've ever played were stumbled upon by accident. I remember I went to GameStop to buy the original Modern Warfare, but they were all sold out at the time. I was 17 and determined to spend some money that day. I saw Mass Effect on a shelf and purchased it out of curiosity. Best decision that I ever made. Same thing with Second Sight. Christmas Day, I unwrapped this game, and the first thing I saw was this big yellow bargain bin $7.99 sticker on it. I remember my giving my mom that look like, what the fuck? Like, cause I knew she was being cheap, but thank goodness that she was because I played through that game like five times. In Second Sight, you play as a guy who wakes up in a research facility with no memory of his past. He discovers he has these psychic abilities that can control people, devices, and situations, and you have to combine that with stealth moments to sneak around and discover what happened to you. Make a sequel, Codemasters. Number 2 the Legend of Dragoon. And my favorite JRPG of all time is Legend of Dragoon. The story was nothing special. You play as a spiky haired kid traveling the world fighting evil and shit, you know, typical RPG. But what I loved about the game is the combat system. It was unique and refreshing for its time. Yes, it was turn based, but when you attacked, if you timed your buttons correctly, you could extend your attacks and do more damage, and you could also counter people's attacks. This is one of the first RPGs to do this. And then, when you transformed into your Dragoon form, which was like this half human, half dragon Super Saiyan mode, it was <laughs> number one. Jack and Dexter. Words can't describe how disappointed I was when Naughty Dog got on stage during E3 2014 and announced Uncharted 4. You know, that same game that was announced back during E3 2013. It's like people have amnesia and get excited by anything. Uncharted's cool, but it's time to give it a rest and have Jack and Dexter return back to prominence. The Jack series is platformer royalty. No game besides Sly Cooper is matching Jack and Dexter's charm either. Beautiful worlds, tight controls, and funny dialogue. The people are clamoring for it naughty dog please bring it back and i'm willing to bet jack 4 would push ps4 hardware sales over the top i just beat the precursor legacy on vita at 100 which is like my fourth time beating the game i just started jack 2 again and i will play 3 from my hd collection i'm fiending for this shit bruh we need all that shit naughty dog i'm not fucking playing with you so <laughs> that's my list guys what are your top five games that deserve a sequel let me know in the comment section below and when you're done leaving your comment make sure to check out modernwarnigo.com we post the latest gaming news reviews previews anime comics and music you can even submit your own article it's your one-stop shop for all things geek i'd like to thank you guys for watching but my city needs me
Ah. Uh.